Valley Conference men's basketball game of the week on the Valley on ESPN as the Bradley Braves play host to the Drake Bulldogs. Greetings from historic Carver Arena in downtown Peoria, Illinois. I'm Mitch Holtis, joined by my partner tonight, Dana Hughes. It's a big night potentially for Drake. Why? Here's what's at stake. Loyola is playing currently. If Drake wins tonight, they will tie for the regular season Valley Championship with Loyola. However, Drake has the tiebreaker, and the Bulldogs will be the one seed next week in Arch Madness if they win tonight against the Bradley Braves. And for Drake, they've had to overcome some injuries, but overcome, one of the big reasons they've overcome is Joseph Yesifu. Not only picking up the slack, he's rewriting the record book. You're exactly right, Mitch. Joseph Yesifu has done an outstanding job picking up the slack. They lost their leading scorer, Shanquan Temple, and they needed someone else to step up. Last night, Joseph Yesifu got it done. 16 points. He has been outstanding over this last week. He was co-player of the week last week in Missouri Valley Conference. Bradley's needed just Sean Henry. It's been a rough couple of weeks for the Braves. Yes, it has. They've lost some firepower. But Deshaun Henry, they are grateful he is back in the lineup. 17 points last night. They're going to need more production from him in this matchup tonight. Let's take a look now at our Prairie Farms dairy starting lineups. A presentation of Prairie Farms. Dedicated farmers, happy cows, real milk. All right, before the injuries to Penn and Hemphill, the average age of these guys on the Drake starting five, older than the Chicago Bulls <laughs> and the Minnesota Timberwolves. There's a lot of winning in these five guys, and they can make more history tonight for Drake. You're exactly right, Mitch. And what what we're seeing is veteran leadership for the Bulldogs all season long. A record-breaking season for the Bulldogs, 24 and two in this game, and they're looking to cruise into Arch Madness. And Bradley's got to have somebody else step up tonight besides Henry. Is that Kevin Einan? Is that Rink Mast? They already have to make an adjustment to the lineup. Kevin McAdoo with a wrist injury last night in the Drake victory. And so Sean East, who's got the football right, football, sorry, got the ball right now to start the game. It is game on in the Valley. Game on in America's Renaissance Conference, the 18th league game. And what a job this league has done to reach its final regular season night tonight. And all 10 teams will play a complete schedule. A champion will be crowned tonight one way or the other. Well, Mitch, we also have another curveball thrown. Ville Tavaninen is not in the starting lineup. He will play, but he's got a little bit of an illness. So another hurdle to jump for the Bradley Braves. There's Sean East missing his first shot of the evening. I really like Sean East. And normally he's one of the first men off the bench, kind of an infused energy that goes onto the court. He's relegated to that starting lineup now. He can be a factor in this game. He's got a tough assignment. He's got yes to start the game defensively. Drake loves to share the ball and find the extra pass. But a miss there from Murphy. Well, Drake really does a nice job sharing the wealth. Let's check now with Dana Hughes. Keys to the game. It's a production of Mercy. Your life is our life's work. Well, Drake has to come out with some early energy. They got down nine points with nine minutes left in the first half last night. They were able to rally and outscore 27 to 9 to go ahead and keep the lead. They have to have that early energy and not get down early. D plus O equals win. The defense has to propel the offense in order for them to get a win for the Bulldogs. That's the way. They only rotate in, Mitch, about five guys. Two guys off the bench, but sparingly time for those guys off the bench. So their defense has to propel their offense in order for them to work. Dana, last night in the Drake victory in this building, Murphy played 35 minutes for Drake. Brody, 35. Wilkins, 40. Sturts 39, and yes, it was 40 minutes. They basically played five guys all night. There were only 11 bench minutes for Drake, and so you and I are both interested to see if that carries over to tonight. Yeah, putting a lot of weight on the shoulders of the starters, but these guys, what's so impressive also, you're seeing a lot of movement 
for them. And the first basket of the game goes to Jay Sean Henry. Seems like Bradley is trying to make a concerted effort to get the easier shots close to the basket. That's where Sean East the second comes in. He can do a lot of things, but one of the be better things he does is drive to the basket and kick to the outside. Kentucky's fourth in the league. He gets four assists per game, does East. Coming off the bench. And there's a nice hustle play underneath by Darius Hanna, freshman for them, who they have high hopes for. Absolutely, and that's the hustle type of play they need from Darius Hanna, only averaging 3.7 points a game, but also has three and a half rebounds per game as well. So he's maturing, he's very skilled. They really believe he has a huge upside. Bradley so far, great rotation defensively and energy. And a walk here, an open floor turnover that that's just something Bradley cannot do tonight. Drake will force you into enough turnovers. You can't get too sped up and just hand them one, and that's what Antonio Thomas did there. You're exactly right. Had a wide open three. Cannot go in this game and be reluctant to drop, drop that three shot. Eventually, Drake, because they are a veteran team, because they are old, they'll start to sink into the paint and dare you to throw that three up. If you're not going to be confident, it won't drop. Wilkins. And he drains the three. DJ Wilkins, when he gets two or more threes, Drake is 16-0. He had three threes in a Monday victory at the Knapp Center in Des Moines against Evansville. Such a huge threat and excellent move to the hole by Jason Henry. Jason Henry is really confident. He stepped up as a leader ever since. They've had the suspension of their top player. Jason Henry has been back in the lineup for the last three games. He led in scoring last night, but he's one of those guys that has assumed the leadership role in several ways on and off the court. Murphy misses the three. Bradley runs the floor. Rick Mast from the Netherlands runs the floor, and Bradley gets an easy bucket to lead by five early. And that's what you want from Rank Mass, the athleticism, speed, and effort down the court. That's the cool thing that Bradley recognizes as they've gone through some adversity this season. They have to counter that with extra effort and extra hustle, and that's what Mass brings to the table. Darnell Brody, the cone drill, <laughs> dribbling, hit a big night last night, a career-high 21, the Drake big man. And last touch, off the leg of Sean East. Not very, not very many quality shots for Drake so far in this game. They're down by five, but mainly because of the hustle and extra effort of the Bradley Braves. Reese Mask gets it done. I have the power to lower my A1C because I can still make my own insulin. And Trulicity activates my body to release it. Once weekly Trulicity is for type 2 diabetes. Most people taking it reached an A1C under 7%. Trulicity may also help you lose up to 10 pounds and lower your risk of cardiovascular events, whether you know you're at risk or not. Trulicity isn't for people with type 1 diabetes. It's not approved for use in children. Don't take Trulicity if you're allergic to it. You or your family have medullary thyroid cancer or have multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2. Stop Trulicity and call your doctor right away if you have an allergic reaction, a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, changes in vision, or diabetic retinopathy. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis. Taking Trulicity with sulfonylurea or insulin raises low blood sugar risk. Side effects include nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, which can lead to dehydration and may worsen kidney problems. I have it within me to lower my A1C. Ask your doctor about Once Weekly Trulicity. The Capital One Quicksilver card does not need a dog and pony show. It's simple. Unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase with no annual fee. No need to jump through any crazy hoops. What's in your wallet? I feel like I would go with the signature strawberry limeade. Add in cranberry. It'll give you that kick like right there in the back. Sonic Ultimate Drink Stop. This muscle right here it might be a little. Mitch Holt is back in Peoria, Illinois, along with Dana Hughes. And a reminder, the Valley on ESPN is brought to you by State Farm. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Interesting, Darren DeVries, the Valley Coach of the Year two years ago. I mentioned last night 
only played two guys off the bench, and they only played 11 total minutes. He's already going to sub here at the under-16 timeout. Bradley's come out with some energy, and Drake looks a little heavy-legged to start the game. Yes, they do, and that might be a result of having your main five guys play such a bulk of the game just not even 24 hours ago. So they're going to get a little rotation going. Issa Samaka is going to come in, number 13, a raw athletic young talent that actually gives a, a boost of energy because he's going to play both ends of the floor. Not going to score much, but he can affect some shots. Jonah Jackson also in. A senior who had a big arch madness opening round last year. Yes, Afu gets the corner turned but cannot finish and Mast is there with the board. That's what they want from Yesifu is to get to the basket. He is so explosive with the ball in his hands. And Mast has fouled on the help side defense. Jonah Jackson is fouling for the game's first infraction. That's the second time they've tried to get the ball to Reese Mast in the paint on that high pick and roll. He does a really nice job of separating on the roll side, but opening up just enough to clear the lane to give it an easier pass for the guards. And Bradley is getting driving lanes, and Samaka is tied up, although he thought he ripped it clean. Drake's going to get it on the arrow. Issa Samaka, a 1A state champion in the state of Iowa. And they like uh, his upside and potential to get... He's got to give uh, Darren DeVries minutes tonight. Well, he's so athletic. He's so raw. But the one thing you can't coach that he brings to the table is effort. He really does a nice job. Sometimes he gets in foul trouble, makes a couple of silly mistakes. But it's mostly because of his effort on the floor. Sturts and a five count. Drake is usually good at spacing the floor and rescuing somebody who's picked up their dribble. But that time, Bradley's swarming defensively. And forcing Sturts into the five count. Really tight defense. Force that turnover. Another turnover for the Drake Bulldogs. Gotta love the effort so far by Bradley. Let's face it, Mitch. In numbers, the Bulldogs are a better basketball team. But Bradley can counter that with those kind of extra effort plays. Forcing a lot of errors. And getting a couple open shots for the big men down low. And Dana, it's been crazy with these back to backs. Getting some big reason the back. He's going to get their entire schedule. And there's a three that Bradley needs, and it's short. But we've seen complete flip flops. We had Valpo in Indiana State last night, and Valpo was smothered by the Sycamores. They're completely doing the opposite tonight. Uh, Indiana State has got almost the exact score, and there's a big shot knocked down by Jonah Jackson for the Bulldogs. But we're seeing, in 24 hours, completely different games. Absolutely, and that's that's one of the benefits of having these weekend doubleheaders is you never know what team is going to show up from night to night. Things can happen differently in the Valley Conference. So much competition. Teams take it personal. And we talked to a couple of coaches where they said, hey, when you play one night after the other, Guys are fresh. Things are fresh in guys' memory. They understand and recognize what they did wrong the first night, what they can correct the second night, and the, you add the competitive nature of these players. And that's why you're seeing drastically different type of play from night to night. On a Friday, Saturday, or Saturday, Sunday, you might get two different ball games. Valpo was held under 20 by Indiana State last night. They've done just completely the opposite, and they lead by 17 now to Valpo. <laughs> They win that game. They're going to uh, avoid the first round. And Bradley showing some pride here tonight. And a big three knockdown for the Braves. Jason Kent with the three. And only his tenth make of the year from distance. He was one of five last night from three. Well, Jason Kent got thrust into the starting lineup at Missouri State. As you see, Samaka there. You can see how raw he is. Should have taken that a little stronger to the hoop and maybe try to draw a foul. But look for a pass and outlet. Fortunately, they'll get the ball back under the basket. And Darren DeVries goes back to his original starting five. So he gets a bucket from Jackson and some minutes from Samaka. But now he goes back to the Iron Man of Drake. And there's the youth right there by Samaka. One dribble strong to the basket. He'll learn how to do that as he continues to mature in this game. 
But Bradley showed some quickness here tonight as well. Well, Bradley's doing a nice job. Watch how they're closing down on Yesifu as he gets into the paint. They're not allowing him to get any kind of layup or clear layup lane and try to draw a foul. Closing it down in great fashion. He's been forced to kick it out to the outside. And there you see just a mental error by Tremel Murphy out of bounds when he caught the pass. And in Drake is number one in the league in turnover margin. They already have four turnovers here. We're not the under-12 timeout. That is not their DNA usually. And they're minus one in the turnover margin. There's a good look and a sweet move by Sean East. Transfer from UMass. And he's got a good start to this game. And Bradley leads by eight. They led by nine last night in the first half. Well, I really like Sean East, the second game. He brings... Infuses a lot of energy into this team. Very active on defense. Lefty can create some problems for opposing defenses. You can see some frustration there. Not a lot of movement. And DJ Wilkins showing his frustration with the Aaron shot. He was wanting a quicker ball screen, I yeah. think, from Darnell Brody. Well, it seems like the tempo has been created by Bradley in this game so far, which is very uncharacteristic for DeVries' Bulldogs. Well, a quick move and no finish. It was a mismatch for the Braves. And a good read by Hannah, but couldn't finish the dunk. Got a mismatch down low with the big man, Darnell Brody. He can be a force in this game. Very athletic, absolutely great move by D.J. Wilkins. The up and under by Wilkins, his fourth and fifth points. And Bradley is trying to turn the tables on Drake. Again, if Drake wins tonight, they will be no less than the one seed in Arch Madness next week. Did you hear that? Stay Farm thing. Dun, 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 dun. I think we're in a commercial. Jake from State Farm, I knew it. Don't worry, Chris. Things are gonna go surprisingly great. Dad, look! <laughs> See? Surprising. Just like State Farm surprisingly great rates. I, I didn't even record. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Spices too. Honey, don't worry. I got this. Chocolate says chalice. Peanut butter, peanut butter. Our. Whether you're getting one last item or filling up the pantry, gluten free. No problem. The Schnooks Rewards app helps you bring the entire list home. They call me the King of Clicks. Schnooks Rewards. Get the app that gets you. So basically, it's a tiny end. At Drury Hotels, we know life on the road can be hard. But we're here to make the journey easier. With over 150 locations, our friendly team members and generous free amenities like Wi-Fi, hot breakfast, 530 kickback featuring hot food and cold beverages help brighten your day and make your time away from home easier, allowing you to travel happy. Bradley leads Drake here in Peoria, 13 to 7. Let's look at our Valley standings. A presentation of Zervita. And again, a lot of drama tonight. Loyola is winning. If they win and Drake wins here, they will tie for the co-championship for the Valley. It'll be Drake's second championship in the last three years. But Drake will get the one seed in Arch Madness. Bradley still has a minimal chance of playing out of the first round, but they must win tonight and then hope for a lot of good things for them to happen. But Drake, again, setting here a record number of wins already at 24 and two. Here's the other scores. Again, Loyola's winning, although now Southern Illinois is challenging them in the second half. And this Valpo Indiana State score is a complete flip-flop of last night. It's just amazing to see the difference in 24 hours in those two teams. Tyreek Key not playing tonight for Indiana State, out with a precautionary uh, measure by Greg Lansing, a shoulder injury, same injury suffered last year in Arch Madness. Didn't play last night. He's just resting, getting ready for St. Louis. And that just shows the metal and 
mental fortitude that you see from Valpo is that they're able to come back from that loss last night and be up by 26 in this game so far. We've seen a little bit more attitude. I love the attitude on the floor by DJ Wilkins. Saw some frustration earlier. They're not playing their style of basketball. And Darren DeVries, during these timeouts, are going to challenge his core. Right, right now, Wilkins is trying to carry these guys. Absolutely. He had 16 points and five assists. It kind of reminds me of Isaiah Mosley, or they remind each other. They're guys that can pull up and shoot from anywhere on the court. He can slash. He can create between he and Joe Yesifu. They can be a, a dominant tandem in the backcourt. Bradley's kind of settled here of late for threes, where initially they were going at Drake. Sturts with the steal, but it's restolen here by the Braves. And again, a rare turnover. Uh-oh, and we've got an injured Bradley player. They're already down, dudes. Looks like he's holding his right ankle. Oh. Again, dealing with a wrist injury to Kevin McAdoo. Most everybody who follows the Valley knows about the suspensions. But now, an injury to another Brave underneath the basket. Yeah, let's go back and check. Uh, and we appreciate the folks at Zervita so much, one of our great sponsors. But let's go back and look at this and go around the Valley. All right. Illinois State turning the tables on Northern Iowa. You and I won last night, but if Illinois State wins there, uh, gives them some momentum going into St. Louis. Yep. Uh, again, Southern Illinois is challenging Loyola tonight at the Genteel Center in Rogers Park. And Evansville leading Missouri State. Missouri State has been so hot over the past two to three weeks. Exactly right. And uh, Loyola is so competitive as you get down towards this last week approaching arch madness and the injury on the floor was jay sean henry they cannot afford to lose him but he looks like he's laboring a lot on that right ankle just got it twisted up as he was hustling back to defend on the fast break by drake after the turnover and dane and henry had been the guy led him in scoring the last two games first yeah. time in his career he had done that last night he gave Bradley a chance, 17 points, six rebounds, and now with an apparent serious ankle injury. And Brian Wardle's running out of troops. He's run, running out of high-octane guys that can make plays for him. J. Sean Henry is the only guy that has played a lot of minutes that has been a part of this program for three years or more. A lot of youth on the floor for the Bradley Braves. Don't know Brody with an old school outlet pass. Still Bill Russell, West Unsell outlet. Sturts always sneaky. Look at that hustle by Garrett Sturts. One on three for the rebound. He wanted it more than the Braves. They get to reset their offense. And that's exactly what Garrett Sturts brings to the table. One of the guys that just shows up each and every game in every aspect of the game. And there's a Joseph Yo yes, a few we know. A guy that can get to the basket, but he is an absolute scorer. And efficient. Last yes. week I had him. He had 32 in the game we had on our Valley Game of the Week on 14 shots. I left the arena going, <laughs> he can't do any better than that. The next night, he had 36 on 18 shots. 68 points in 48 hours. One of the greatest two-day performance in Drake history. And here he gets going and now and ties the game with two, a couple of buckets. A quick timeout called by Brian Wardle, recognizing the heat that is coming from the Bulldogs as they call, score consecutive points to tie this game. Bradley behind the eight ball right now, but they got to figure out a way to fight through it. I used to be bad with money, but I'm not anymore. I got my money right with SoFi. Thanks, SoFi, for helping us get our money right. <laughs> this has got the steak and the sizzle. The tots on this are just crispy and they're flavorful. This will oh. keep you out of my tots. Sonic Extra Long Ultimate Cheese Steaks.
Yeah, this might keep me out of your talks. For attractive offers on the ultra-responsive Acura TLX, visit your Acura dealer today. Exploration. It's in our DNA. And there are new worlds to explore. What do I smell? What colors do I see? What music is playing? When you walk out to the ring, there's nothing more important than confidence. So you've got to train your mind to protect it. I do that by focusing on what's around me, never letting the moment get too big. When that bell sounds, nerves are nowhere to be found. Confidence is half the battle when breaking through, so protect it. Train what's under the armor. Tonight, I'll be eating a calzone from Dobal's in Aurora. Rock on. Tonight, I'll be eating lobster thermidor au gratin. Really? Yeah, the monkeys might fly out of my butt. Make it two calzones. Is it Chef Curry time? Or King James time? It's NBA on ESPN time. Warriors Lakers on ESPN. Tonight's State Farm Valley Scholar Athlete of the Game is Bradley's Hannah Thompson, a volleyball junior outside hitter from Beacon, Illinois. Thompson is a 4.0 in health science, a two-time all-conference choice. This is a very good volleyball league, by the way, and the 2018 Valley Freshman of the Year. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Always national challengers coming out of the Valley in volleyball. Drake also trying to improve its resume tonight in case they do not win Arch Madness and get the automatic bid. And right now, most of the pundits have Drake in the tournament, even if they do not win next week in Arch Madness. They win tonight, they'll be 25-2, and two, best in school history. Well, make no mistake about it, Darren DeVries wants his team the third year in the league. They've done some outstanding things, breaking records during his tenure here, just three years with the wins that they've gotten. They want to have a lot of momentum going into Arch Madness, and they know they can make a splash in the NCAA tournament as well. Connor Linky does a nice job in working against Darnell Brody, and now Bradley showing some zone. And this is how you're able to utilize the lack of, of depth on your team, is to go to a zone, force things to slow down, and more importantly, force outside shots, closing up the lane and daring the great Bulldogs to have to pull up from the outside, and they're able to get the Aaron shot and another possession here. And yes, if he looks at Darren DeVries, goes, they're in zone. Can I go back? <laughs> yes. Yes, the floor is so quick defensively, plays both ends of the floor so well. Well, again, a live ball turnover. Drake lives off these. They changed their style defensively. Darren Breeze was talking about it earlier this month. Became more aggressive on the half court. It's changed everything for them. Well, they're so active on offense and defense. Their hands by their backcourt. Six to shoot against the zone. Bradley's good in this thing. Sturt sneaky. Slinking underneath the zone to get the reverse layoff. That's Garrett Sturt's at his best. And you watch his Drake Bulldogs team, and you think when the clock gets inside eight seconds, there would be a little bit of anxiety or trying to make something happen it's just part of their offense they understand the clock they understand where to be to open up the doors for easier shots and there's no better epitome of that than garrett sturtz he's he's one of those guys he is the hustle guy the blue collar guy he knows exactly how to find a crease just enough open to get the reverse layup one of the things Brian Wardle told us a couple days ago is in this series, he wanted to drive the ball at Drake to try to get him in foul trouble. Only two fouls on Drake and worth the 632 mark of the first half. And a steal and a breakaway and an and one from El Murphy. 
Tramel Murphy with the dunk. Darnell Brody got it started with the steal. Well, that's an outstanding job. You talk about wanting to drive towards Drake and get them in foul trouble. Darnell Brody is normally that guy, a big body guy that has a tendency to get in foul trouble. But he has outstanding technique, gets the steal, one pass down the court, and then the finish with a foul by Murphy. Murphy 69%, although he's three for four last night and completes the three-point play for his first three points of the game. This is a Drake, the team that's very unselfish. Yeah. Although Murphy had 30 points against Illinois State, 28 minutes on 15 shots. Well, Murphy also is very active. He leads the team with 23 blocks. So very active offensively and defensively. You see how he can fill the lane so quickly, just outran the guards for the Bradley Braves on that dunk. And after Bradley got off to the outstanding start, this is very similar to last night. They had a 23 to 14 lead to Bradley. Drake able to hold him off and beat Bradley by nine. And there's Mast. Mast able to get his second field goal. He's been a double figure seven of the last nine games. Excellent patience displayed by Rank Mast. He's realized the mismatch he had with DJ Wilkins guarding him, took his time, and got the little jump hook to drop. And a team called timeout, and a look at Joe Yosifu, who has been just a machine here of late. From three coming into tonight, 18 of his last 30 from three over the past four games. You know, one thing I think there's a lot of stuff that's underrated about this Drake team. And one is the strength of this team. I mean, this is... Yesifu's not 6'3", yep. but he's got a 40-inch 40, 40 vertical. <laughs> These guys are strong. Very strong indeed, and they play both ends so well. It's equally aggressive, equally with the same energy, offensively and defensively. And when your guards like DJ Wilkins and Joe Yesifu can score like that, they impose a little bit of fear into defenses a little bit more. And they have yet to really get... Darnell Brody involved offensively in the game. Had 21 points and seven rebounds yesterday, but Bradley gives Bradley credit. They are focusing on him down low, not allowing him to have that scoring surge like he did last night. Rebounding even at nine apiece. Drake does that too. They've out-rebounded 19 of their opponents this year. A little matchup zone. Trying to make it difficult, and there is that Swiss Army knife, that guy, the blue-collar guy that figures out a way to get in the stats and get involved. That was such a nice job. Last night had 11 points, six rebounds, four assists. There were a few guys on the Drake Bulldogs team that was effective in all categories. A three launch and deferring to that one. Brody with a rebound, one of the better rebounders in the league. At 29 rebounds in two games against Missouri State. And the Bulldogs will give Antonio Thomas that outside shot. Hasn't shown that he can make that shot consistently. It's the same for Sean E. He's better when he goes to the basket, just like this. They've got to get him going. He just shuts it out to get two more points against Brody. Well, the, the Bulldogs were looking for a fast break. Wasn't expecting Sean East the second to get two rebounds there and multiple opportunities for the Bastards. Good persistence. Bradley has such a history of great guard play. I mean, for decades. And East might be the next one. Again, no points yet tonight for Darnell Brody, and you mentioned his career high last night at 21. He's such a big body guy, and you got to give credit to Rank Mast. He's keeping them outside the paint. Doing a really nice job being strong with the big man. And there you see, Darnell Brody gets to hang around the basket a little bit more because there's not much respect for the outside shooting of the Bradley Braves. So he doesn't have to switch on the outside or extend any energy, extra energy, getting outside. Well, some tough defense. Physical there, Darius Hanna, the two physicals is... A foul there, and for Bradley, that is only their second personal foul. Well, the Drake Bulldogs up by one as we come to a timeout. A lot of energy from the Bradley Braves. They just keep scratching and clawing to stay in this game.
You care about every detail. And so do we. Every ingredient from our trusted sources. Every ingredient has a purpose. Purina cares here and here. The State Farm MVC Men's Basketball Championship is back in the Gateway City this March. It begins here as 10 Valley teams battle it out to advance to the big dance. The 2021 edition of Arch Madness tips off March 4th through 7th at Enterprise Center in downtown St. Louis. Presented by Fox Sports Midwest. Visit archmadness.com or download the Arch Madness app. Since 1907, the Valley runs deep. Welcome back to Peoria, Illinois. A reminder, stay tuned for our halftime report. It's a presentation of State Farm. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. We'll have a special profile on DJ Wilkins. We talked about the strength of this team. We talked about the experience of this team. You'll see that. And we'll take a look at a first-half recap and stats right now. Neither team is lighting enough shooting. By the way, Loyola is being challenged by Southern Illinois. And it's late in the second half, and Southern Illinois is within five in that game. Drake has to take care of their own business here against a feisty Bradley team that's lost to Sean Henry. Also, so far, Delay Tavaninen has not played tonight because of illness. A real short bench for both of these teams. Yeah, and one of my keys to victory for the Braves was Vila Tavaninen. Well, Viva, Vila. That's what I had on my list is a guy that was going to be a key factor in this game. And so far, he has not shown up on the court as Tramel Murphy misses his first free throw. But, Mitch, each of these teams, one of eight and one of nine from three-point range. So, outside shooting has not been a plenty for either team. I just feel like we're at the Drake Relays watching the 10,000-meter run, <laughs> and they're trying to just gut through the last several laps. Doesn't that feel like it to you? Yeah. That's what makes Arch Madness so special this year. I think every year it's so entertaining, but this year it might be just the survival of the fittest. Who's going to be able to grind through? This is a revival game tonight and getting the roll. That's Darius Hanna. Again, another one of the freshmen here, but he's fourth in the league in field goal shooting percentage. Well, he does such a nice job. You can see how long he is. Very tough at the basket. Outstanding job defensively by Wink Mass. Mass looked like Rick Smith, also <laughs> from the Netherlands, swapped that one away. But uh, Drake will keep it with 3.09 to go in the half and Bradley leading by one. Well, with the loss of Elijah Childs to suspension, you need to have that presence in the middle. Samuel Murphy tries to get a little extra physical. He and Jason Kent have been banging for a large part of this first half. Here's the press. One thing Darren DeVries does very well is switch defenses, but with the lighter bench, he hasn't done it much tonight, but it does it there and actually rushes Bradley in the half court. That's a nice job setting that up. The big man down low, getting another easy rebound. You can see the double team quickly. Not allowing him, and then Garrett starts. <laughs> My goodness, he knows exactly how to get near the basket. He knows how the ball is going to carry him off the rim, and he's there to get those easy buckets and put back. Danon, I love guys <laughs> who understand the angles of yeah. this game. And he might, better than anybody in the league, understand the angles. Mass way deep against Murphy. And Rick Mass has got his... Third field goal. He's going to get a chance to go to the line here. 
Well, Bradley is definitely winning the effort and energy game so far. Just scratching and clawing. Gets a little too deep into the paint. A nice little baby hook there by Rank Mast with the contact. I mean, these guys are so young. This experience over these last four games, ever since the suspension of their studs, you've had to mature more quickly than I'm sure Brian Wardle had expected. And no Henry tonight after starting the game and at four points, injuring an ankle. Yeah, he doesn't look like they ain't coming back. Yeah, once you take that shoe off, we saw him on the sideline with the ice bag. That's pretty much sends the message that he is down for the evening. Be very, very surprised that Deshaun Henry is back in. Sturts, angle, is this on the pass of the shot? This is going to be, it's going to be underneath, not on the shot, it's on Ken. But both teams are, there's, and there's a look at Deshaun Henry injuring his ankle earlier in this half. Yep. Very unfortunate for the Bradley Braves. And going back to that last play on the foul on Sturge. Sturge is six foot three, 175 pounds, but yet he gets a, a pass on the block. He's about to pass it on to Brody. Just great awareness. What a great attack by DJ Wilkins. And he'll earn free throws. Mast had to help and picks up his first foul, just the fourth Bradley team foul. Bradley doing a nice job rotating from zone to man, but not allowing any easy shots close to the rim for the driving guards for the Bulldogs. You're going to love our halftime uh, look at DJ Wilkins. At the line, it's just not getting there enough. I mean, there's a the free throw made. The last two years, He's 85% up the line. This year, 74%. But prior to that free throw, just 15 free throws, free throws attempted <laughs> since January the 3rd. He was 2 of 3 last night. That's one of the luxuries is that you have a strength. You haven't been able to utilize that strength because other guys are stepping up. Just like we mentioned, Yesifu is a guy that kind of takes on that Responsibility of driving to the basket, absorbing contact, getting to the line. Allows DJ Wilkins to kind of be a spot-up guy. That's why he's leading the team at 43% from three points. See if Bradley uses an ISO here for East. There's a mismatch right below with Yesifu and Mass. And they don't see it in time. Shot clock violation. Brian Wardle wanted him. He saw it. But that might be the sign of a young team to it. You get an experienced team, they immediately see that and yep. exploit it. Exactly. It took a little bit of time. This is where they're going to grow. This is the part of the maturation process as the officials are now going to review to see if that launch by Sean East II made it before the shot clock went to zero. Well, that's a real big deal. As hard as buckets have been hard to come by in this game, look at the threes combined. Two of 17. Yeah. And to me, that's just a sign of heavy legs on both sides. And this is actually because they're able to review it, although it was relatively quick, you get a little bit of an extra break and like almost like a, a short timeout to get your legs under you and maybe finish this half a little bit quicker. You can see the clock is down to one. He launches it, still has it in his hands, clear as day. How about that shot, though? He didn't call it, though. No. <laughs> Jeff Mallon working this game tonight. We had him last night. He was on the same, I wonder if he took the same path we took. <laughs> Proud to of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Here's your zone again for Bradley. It's been good. They're long at the front of this. Yeah. There you have Kent coming out. He's so long right there. Forces a disruptive pass. And how about chasing it down like a wide receiver? And the pass. Antonio Thomas for the easy bucket. Still 13 second differential. Game clock, shot clock. And another turnover. Look out here, Bradley. Nails the three. Jason Kemp. And the Braves with a surge, and they lead by five. Exactly what you want to end the half. About 20 seconds left. The Bulldogs will 
play for the last shot, but you're talking about infusing energy and going in on a positive note. If you can get a stop here, that'd be huge for the Braves. You saw the 8-8 eight, eight tie in points off turnovers. Usually Drake dominates that stat. Yes, sir, Poo, trying to get the last shot. He will not get it off. And uh, Bradley Braves working on one of the biggest upsets of the Valley this season. They lead by five of the Drake Bulldogs, who if the Dogs win tonight, will be the one seed next week in Arch Madness. But get ready for an exciting next 20 minutes. I have the power to lower my A1C. Because I can still make my own insulin. And Trulicity activates my body to release it. Once weekly Trulicity is for type 2 diabetes. Most people taking it reached an A1C under 7%. Trulicity may also help you lose up to 10 pounds and lower your risk of cardiovascular events, whether you know you're at risk or not. Trulicity isn't for people with type 1 diabetes. It's not approved for use in children. Don't take Trulicity if you're allergic to it. You or your family have medullary thyroid cancer or have multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2. Stop Trulicity and call your doctor right away if you have an allergic reaction, a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, changes in vision, or diabetic retinopathy. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis. Taking Trulicity with sulfonylurea or insulin raises low blood sugar risk. Side effects include nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, which can lead to dehydration and may worsen kidney problems. I have it within me to lower my A1C. Ask your doctor about Once Weekly Trulicity. With the Capital One Venture Card, you earn unlimited double miles on every purchase every day. Objection! My credit card doesn't earn double miles on every purchase. Overruled! With the Venture Card, it's every purchase. Whoa. What's in your wallet? <laughs> attractive offers on the ultra-responsive Acura TLX. Visit your Acura dealer today. I feel like I would go with the signature strawberry limeade. Add in cranberry. It'll give you that kick, like right there in the back. Sonic Ultimate Drink Stop. This muscle right here. It might be a little tart for me. Exploration. It's in our DNA. And there are new worlds to explore. To support local restaurants, we've been to every city, including Baton Rouge. And even Topeka. Yeah, we're exhausted. Ew. Woo! So tonight, I'll be eating the Roast Beef Hero from Harm in Soho. Excellent. And tonight, I'll be eating the Coconut Curry Chicken from Peakley's in Winter Hill. <laughs> oh, they're excellent. I had so many fried plantains. I thought I was going to Pearl. Do you think they bought it? Oh. And back in Peoria, and a reminder that the Valley on ESPN is brought to you by Zervita. And welcome to our halftime report, a presentation of State Farm with surprisingly great rates. State Farm is the real deal. You can get personalized service from your local agent or use the State Farm mobile app when you're on the go. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. It's time now for tonight's Valley Profile, made possible by Arch Madness 2021. Valley correspondent Michael Admire takes a look at the Bulldogs guard, DJ Wilkins. DJ Wilkins uses each offseason as a time for self-reflection. And every day I finish my workouts, everything, I look in the mirror and I tell myself I had a good day or a bad day. Day by day getting better. It's a work ethic that his high school coach and Indiana Sports Hall of Famer T.J. Lux had seen before. We cut four win seasons, horrible, it's long, it's, it's rough. D.J., Jonah, these guys will not leave the locker room. They're like, we're not leaving. Next year starts today. And D.J. is the type of, the guy, type of guy who you really are building your culture around, or he leads uh, in, in that way. The work ethic has continued to pay off. Through the first 13 games of this season, Wilkins shot a blistering 53% from deep. But in nine games following the COVID shutdown, Wilkins shot just 26%. I mean, it was kind of tough, you know, not hitting the same shots that you were. 
prior to the COVID break. But once again, Wilkins had been through this before. Wilkins was a star quarterback at Maryville High School, and the transition from season to season wasn't always flawless. And Coach TJ Lux reminded him of that a few weeks ago. It was actually something we did text about. Uh, there were some times where early on I was like, man, I know he can shoot. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's going to click. Just knowing that and just him giving me the encouragement that I'm going to get through this and always hearing words from Coach Lux, somebody that like I truly look up to. That's always, you know, it gets me going. The recent comeback isn't a surprise to any of his coaches, former and current. You've seen, you know, the last last few games again where it's starting to, you know, really come back. He's playing with a lot of confidence, and I think because he's stuck with his routine and his daily approach to it, uh, it's paid off for him. Just making sure I don't get discouraged and try to change uh, what I was doing, I was working, and just keep doing what I was doing, and it will come back. Wilkins and his entire team find themselves coming back from more adversity. Lean on that off-season work to get through it. And I feel like if anybody could do it, we can. DJ Wilkins' success is a reflection of consistency. For the Valley on ESPN, I'm Michael Admire. Tonight's profile made possible by the 2021 State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Men's Basketball Tournament. The Valley's 45th Men's Championship will be at Enterprise Center in St. Louis next week. For more information, visit archmadness.com. We come back, we'll check in with first half highlights when we return to Peoria. <laughs> Attractive offers on the ultra-responsive Acura TLX. Visit your Acura dealer today. The Capital One Quicksilver card does not need a dog and pony show. Quicksilver is simple. It's unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase with no annual fee. No need to jump through any crazy hoops. Will someone tell Fido he can cool it with the hoops? The Capital One Quicksilver card. What's in your wallet? They're dropping balloons. <laughs> this has got the steak and the sizzle. The tots on this are just crispy and they're flavorful. This will oh. keep you out of my tots. Sonic Extra Long Ultimate Cheese Steaks. Yeah, this might keep me out of your tots. Exploration. It's in our DNA. And there are new worlds to explore. Tonight, I'll be eating a calzone from Doval's in Aurora. Rock on. Tonight, I'll be eating lobster thermidor au gratin. Really? Yeah, the monkeys might fly out of my butt. Make it two calzones. Hi, I'm a new customer and I want your best new smartphone deal. Well, I'm an existing customer and I'd like your best new smartphone deal. Oh, do you? Actually, it's for both new and existing customers. Oh, I feel silly. <laughs> but I do want the fastest 5G network. Oh, I want the fastest 5G network. Are we actually doing this again? It's not complicated. Only AT&T gives everyone the same great deal. Like the Samsung Galaxy S21 5G for free when you trade in. free edition is free 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 the chicken or the egg the question isn't which came first it's which comes with peanut butter duh
Loyola is being challenged by Southern Illinois and Chicago. Bradley leads Drake here in Peoria at halftime. Let's take a look at our first half highlights made possible by live by Lowe's St. Louis. On the first half, a lot of energy displayed by each team. Yeah, Tremel Murphy with the flush to get a little momentum back on the side of the Drake Bulldogs. Offensively, they haven't been as crisp as we've seen them all season, but Joe Yesifer is a guy that can ignite things. But hand it to the Bradley Braves. Energy, effort, turnovers turn into points. They have 20 points in the paint, seven points off of turnovers, and they go into halftime leading by five. And here's our look at our first half stats. A reminder, uh, visit livebylowshotel.com slash St. Louis Missouri to book your hotel room. Now, let's look at our first half stats. It's a production of Zervita. Nine turnovers by Drake. That's like two games worth for them. Yeah. They're number one in this league in turnover margin. Look at the Braves. Nobody's shooting threes, but the Braves are beating Drake at its own game. Well, it's all about effort right now. Bradley recognizes they are shorthanded, but the guys that are on the court, and this is where head coach Brian Wardle has to be proud of the energy and effort that he's getting from his guys. Several would be just backups, maybe not even touching the court for more than three or four minutes a game, but yet they've had to assume bigger roles, and they're stepping up and getting it done. Again, Loyola trying to hang on against Southern Illinois. Drake trailing by five here at halftime. There is drama in this final regular season. Lineup in the Valley. Stay tuned. It's going to be a big 20 minutes, both in Chicago and here in Peoria. Attractive offers on the ultra responsive Accurate TLX. Visit your Accurate dealer today. How is yours? Because you got the spicy cheesesteak. A little fire. A little fire. And desire. Oh, I don't know about all that. Sonic Extra Long Ultimate Cheesesteaks. You're taking it too far. I know it's date day and all. Exploration. It's in our DNA. And there are new worlds to explore. With the Capital One Venture Card, you earn unlimited double miles on every purchase every day. Objection! My credit card doesn't earn double miles on every purchase. Overruled. With the Venture Card, it's every purchase. Whoa. What's in your wallet? All Ivy, Player of the Year, first round draft pick. No matter my achievement, I question if I deserve it. It's a battle with an invisible opponent imposter syndrome but i found a way to conquer it i watch film not of my mistakes but of what i'm doing right each clip reminding me that there's no imposter here train what's under the armor tonight i'll be eating a calzone from doughballs in aurora rock on tonight i'll be eating lobster thermidor au gratin really yeah the monkeys might fly out of my butt. Make it two calzones. Hi, I'm a new customer and I want your best new smartphone deal. Well, I'm an existing customer and I'd like your best new smartphone deal. Oh, do you? Actually, it's for both new and existing customers. Oh, I feel silly. <laughs> but I do want the fastest 5G network. Oh, I want the fastest 5G network. Are we actually doing this again? It's not complicated. Only AT&T gives everyone the same great deal, like the Samsung Galaxy S21 5G for free when you trade in. Free edition is free. Free, 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 free. I get those it's no I'm gonna get that lion we built next. You got champion versus champion. He wants to leave behind a lasting legacy. Guess what? I'm the best in the world. I get those every time. You'll see.
Back in Peoria, and a reminder that the Valley on ESPN is brought to you by Mercy. Your life is our life's work. And who has life? Bradley has life, even though they've lost to Sean Henry to an injury. And Tavaninen is out with an illness. Now, around the Valley, they're going to overtime in Chicago. Number 21 ranked, the Ramblers of Loyola, Chicago, tied with the Salukis of Southern Illinois at 56. Valpo's turned the tide on Indiana State, just a flip-flop of last night's game. Illinois State showing some pride against UNI, and Evansville doing the same against Missouri State. But for the Drake folks watching us tonight, I mean, there's good news, bad news here. The good news is, wow, Loyola's being challenged. They're going to overtime in Chicago. Wait a minute. Well, we're trailing by far. That's what Drake's people are saying. Because Bradley, you talk about overcoming adversity. That's what the Braves have done tonight. Yes, they have. And they've done it in great fashion. And it's been primarily on the defensive end. Mitch, this Drake Bulldogs team shot 52% yesterday to win the first game of this doubleheader. And so far in this game, 43% offensively. And they've done an outstanding job. I give credit to the Braves defensively getting turnovers getting buckets after turnovers and really establishing the momentum and pace of this game so far and drake again nine turnovers one for eight from three and darren debris trying to figure it out bradley gets the first possession of the second 20. You see bradley trying to stretch out the defense just a bit they like to run their offense through the left side of the floor. And there you see it right there with a kick. Antonio Tom, that's Jason Kent, not accurate, but again, extra effort and hustle plays by Rank Mass. He's been in the right place, right time on a few occasions for those putbacks. And again, using turning the cannon on Drake. Drake usually good. In second chance opportunities, the best team in the league in rebound margin and offensive rebounds. And Bradley has got a seven point advantage. A tough take, but a foul on Bradley before the make by Wilkins. I like how DJ Wilkins has really assumed a leadership role. Time to reestablish the momentum on his side, get a little aggressive to the basket for the first attempt of the second half. That's the guy that needs to get hot. So no from Yesifu, off target there, but he's a guy that had co-player of the week last week, scoring 32, 36, and 20 points in those three games. Four tonight. Well, and these young Bradley players, Hannah's a freshman, East is a sophomore transfer from UMass. Mast is a redshirt freshman. Thomas is a sophomore, but with these guys are stepping up tonight. And yeah. right now they're getting every loose ball, David. Yeah. yeah, those are extra effort. They're not assuming anything. You can have three white jerseys in the paint, and yet you're seeing still the effort, and that's where Mast, they like to utilize him. It's going to be a foul, and it's going to be on Darius Hanna and Brian Wardle does not like it. Well, Darius Hanna had position and size against DJ Wilkins underneath, got a little aggressive. DJ Wilkins went flying out of bounds and he got the benefit of the doubt. Darnell Brody yet to score at 21 last night, a career high. That's where he's used to being and able to score right there. Nice job, good footwork, good patience. Didn't catch the pass clean, but he still was able to get the bucket. You need a little bit more of that from him in the second half. Such a big bucket. And again, the Braves have deferred to threes. They've only had two makes in the game. And to the three. DJ Wilkins. Gets the second Bulldog three of the game, and Wilkins has 12 to lead all scores. It's a nice rhythm. You can see so much confidence in DJ Wilkins' game. Doesn't matter if he's going to the left, right to the basket, or catch and shoot. He has it all in his arsenal. 
And again, Bradley settles for a three. The last four attempts have been for bonus distance. And now Drake can take the lead with a three. And back to Wilkins. I loved our halftime feature from Michael Admar, the voice of the Bulldogs. Because you know one thing about the black, I remember Darren Brooks in this league was the MVP two years in a row for Southern Illinois. A high school football quarterback. And that's what Wilkins was. Yeah. You see it in the you see it. It comes alive in a game like this. Just toughness. Knows how to be a leader. Almost with the steal there. Another jump shot that they're gonna give Antonio Thomas. He hasn't been able to knock one down yet. Braves not going to the basket as much as they did in the first half, settling for those outside shots. Brody just powers through the defense and a foul on the Braves. The Seton Hall transfer, Darnell Brody, trying to assert himself early in the second half. And he's making a conscious effort to try to get those shots up. He realizes how big he is. Even though the double team is coming quickly with Jason Ken, he's able to squeeze through. Think about it. squeeze through the number 51 as big as he is on the floor, he still has that ability to get a shot up and get the foul. Foul was on the floor, not on the shot. Seven to shoot for Drake. <laughs> Sturts figures out a way to score. Talk about creativity. Ties the game. And there was single digits on the shot clock. He's given up about six inches, and he takes them straight to the hole. A nice little jump baby hook. Yes, if who's got a second foul, Danon. But hands on the uh, dribbler, Sean East. And he's frustrated as well. He's so active with his hands. Really normally does a nice job not creating contact. Totally disagrees with that call. Some of this has not been able to score tonight either. Now you see, look at how much space Wilkins is giving Antonio Thomas. And there's Jason Kent. Kent has three threes made in this game. He came in with nine makes for the season on 38 attempts. 24% yep. for the year on three. And tonight, Kent and Drake able to answer. And that's an angry Joe Yesifu. After the foul call, get a little steam, creates offense from that frustration. Doesn't allow him to get, him, get outside of himself. That's what he can bring to the table. Drake's got the arrow here as Yesifu dives and ties up Mast. That's a great job of energy and effort. The effort we saw from the Braves in the first half, we're starting to see a little bit more from the Bulldogs as they close it within one. Jake from State Farm, if you here, this must be a State Farm commercial. Sure is. It also means it's about to go down. Oh, don't worry, Chris. Things are going to go surprisingly great. No, I've been doing this for too many years. It, it means something about to go down. Oh, no. Here it comes. Jake, protect yourself. Have a nice day. I told you. Surprising. Just like State Farm's surprisingly great rates. Who are you talking to? Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You are beautifully unique. Unapologetically academic. You're not afraid to color outside the lines, and neither are we. Imagine yourself here in modern labs designed for 21st century students. Drake is a university with a vibrant capital city right next door, where you get a degree that gets employers' attention. This is Drake University, where you will stand out from day one. Learn more at drake.edu. Seidman Cancer Center is proud to be among a select group to receive the National Cancer Institute's highest rating, Exceptional. We're honored and more driven than ever. Our focus is forward as we lead the fight against cancer, looking deeper and reaching higher with breakthrough research, clinical trials, and prevention programs. When you need world-class cancer care, put your trust in Washington University physicians at Seidman Cancer Center. 
When you choose Bradley University, you don't have to choose between the activities and resources of a larger university and the personal attention and exceptional learning experiences of a smaller college. With more than 185 undergraduate and graduate programs, small classes taught by engaging faculty in a beautiful 85-acre campus located in the heart of Peoria, Illinois, our size gives you the best of both worlds. Bradley University, mid-size, big difference. The 2021 State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Men's Basketball Championship returns to Enterprise Center next week. March 4 through 7 in downtown St. Louis. Local seating capacity restrictions will apply for this year's event. For more information, be sure to download the Arch Madness app or visit archmadness.com for details. It was announced earlier this year that Valley Commissioner Doug Elgin, who served in parts of five decades, is going to retire. Darren DeVry played in this league for Northern Iowa. Longtime assistant with Creighton in the Valley and now trying to win the Valley. Maybe outright, depending on what's going on tonight in Chicago. But Doug Elgin built simply one of the greatest postseason tournaments in the country. It's an re NCAA regional field, and uh, we'll do it again next week in St. Louis. And every team in this league will get their 18 league games in. That's a miracle. Absolutely. Such dedication, commitment, discipline by a bunch of 19, 20, 21, 22 year olds doing everything possible along with the coaches and training staff, et cetera, to get these games in. So impressive when you see it at the college level, never mind the pro level during this crazy pandemic. Bradley gets it back. And they get up. It's eight with the drive, finishing at the rim. And Bradley back up by three. And Mitch, you see most of the efficient offensive series and points by Bradley is by way of that left side of the floor. They have two lefties on the floor, normally with East. And Hannah is not on the floor. He's coming back on the floor right now. That's when they're most efficient. They're able to run those high screen and rolls to the left side. Allows those lefties to really get off easier shots. Again, Bradley lost to Sean Henry earlier in the game to an ankle injury. Tabanainen, Vila Tabanainen out because of illness. And they're still leading Drake who's battling for a Valley Championship tonight. And yes, if who gets fouled on the way to the basket, this is going to be on hand, and that's his third foul. Just rotating back in the game, trying to give him a little rest. Didn't want him to get that third foul this early in the second half, but that's what Joe... Yes, if food does. He brings it every single time so strong to the basket. You can see the wraparound by Hannah just gets on the arm of oh, Yes, if food. Outstanding foul shooters, you might guess. Almost 80%. He was 9 of 9 against Northern Iowa in a victory over their arch rivals. And then in the Monday 36 point out burst against Evansville, he got to the line 10 times and made 9. And gets both of these here. Such a complete player. Things get a little tighter here. Oh, a little bit tighter as Darnell Brody's got his first foul. And he acknowledges to the official, got a little handsy. No argument there from Brody. Such a physical force, imposing force in the paint. He really does a nice job when he has to rotate out on the high screen. Still effective. Mast, what a terrific defensive play at the goal by Tremel Murphy. Starts to not slink inside this time. But how good was Murphy with the basket the last time for three? Incredible play. I was expecting it to be a mismatch. But yet Murphy shows his athleticism. As I mentioned earlier, he leads the team coming into this game with 23 blocks. This is 24th there. Nice pull up. Wilkins, 14 points, four over his average. 
And Loyola is going to pull it out. They are winning in overtime with two seconds to go, leading by seven. So the 21st-ranked Ramblers survive against Southern Illinois. But can Drake do the same here? Drake with the lead, 37-36, but Brian Wardle will not surrender. Bradley has come to play, even with a very short bench. For attractive offers on ultra-responsive Acura TLX, visit your Acura dealer today. I feel like I would go with the signature strawberry limeade, add in cranberry it'll give you that kick like right there in the back sonic ultimate drink stop this muscle right here it might be a little tart for me did you know geico could save you hundreds on car insurance and a whole lot more so what are you waiting for hip-hop group tag team to help you plan dessert uh, fresh vanilla, rocky road, chocolate, butter, cookie dough. geico see all the ways you could save to support local restaurants, we've been to every city, including Little Rock and even Worcester. And tonight, I'll be eating the chicken quesadilla from Tony's Tex-Mex in Katy. Trust me. Do you think they bought it? Oh, yeah. Exploration. It's in our DNA. And there are new worlds to explore. Hi, I'm a new customer and I want your best new smartphone deal. Well, I'm an existing customer and I'd like your best new smartphone deal. Oh, do you? Actually, it's for both new and existing customers. Oh, I feel silly. <laughs> but I do want the fastest 5G network. Oh, I want the fastest 5G network. Are we actually doing this again? It's not complicated. Only AT&T gives everyone the same great deal. Like the Samsung Galaxy S21 5G for free when you trade in. Is it Chef Curry time? Or King James time? It's NBA on ESPN time. Warriors Lakers on ESPN. Valley student athletes are positively impacting, impacting the communities where they live by sharing views and fostering a climate of change. To our future Valley pioneers, to learn more about mobilizing voices for change, visit mbc-sports.com slash one valley. This league has been a pioneer for years in that regard. Now, here we go. This is a final. Loyola has won in overtime against Southern Illinois. So the Ramblers will finish with a 16-2 Valley record. Drake must win tonight to keep pace, Dana Hughes, and will win the tiebreaker. Drake will be the one seed. They will be co-champions, but Drake is only leading by one against a Bradley team that wants to deny them the history. Well, they got their hands full right now, just like Loyola did, persevering in overtime, but this game is a one-point game. As Drake has turned it on a little bit more in this second half. And we went down in the first half into halftime. One to shoot here, Danon. They're going to have to lob this. And, bring it. and he gets the bucket. And now Cannon. Rick Mass is having a game. He's got 11, 8 out of his last 10 in double figures. But they're going to come back and look at it. Jeff Mallon wants to make sure because one second, you knew it had to be a catch and shoot. Yeah. That one second. But Jeff Mellon's going to make sure here. It's a good smart play to go and watch the replay just to see if he got it off quick enough. As you mentioned, it has to be a catch and shoot. He does right there. I think it's pretty clear. It's just a matter of whether they started the clock on time. But everything you needed to do, he was able to get it done and knock down the shot. Excellent job by Wayne Mass to go ahead by one point. Boy, a tip of the cap to Bradley to fight through so much adversity and have a shot, and now they're going to be in the zone that was so good to them in the end of the first half. A very nice shot. Look, three red jerseys around DJ Wilkins. They just wanted him to drive to the baseline where he could get some help defense and trap him. 
That's where the size mattered right there for the Braves being another turnover. Very uncharacteristic of great bulldogs here. Eight to shoot. East. Launches. No, and Drake holds the fourth. Drake's the best three-point defensive team in the league as well. Now back to man-to-man -man defense for the Braves, and this is what kind of throws the Bulldogs off. He's switching things up, creating a little bit of confusion. Not sure that's the shot that they wanted for the Bulldogs there. You got to appreciate DJ Wilkins trying to assert some control. He's got the hot hand tonight for the Braves and misfiring there. Kent with the three threes. See how you notice how Bradley is getting back all five guys. They're taking away the transition game that Joe Yosefu wants to be able to instill for the Bulldogs. I'm just going to repeat. Yosefu played 40 minutes last night. So did Wilkins. Murphy and Brody played 35 and Sturts played 39. And they are trying to find the extra gear to try to win a championship. But still trailing by one, and we got 10.41 to go. Well, Mitch, you and I were talking before the game about how playing these many minutes will affect a team. And you wonder, okay, well, players get used to it, muscle memory in regards to what they'll have to go through in Arch Madness next week as the flush by the big man there, Darnell Brody. Excellent bounce pass by D.J. Wilkins. Drake, on the average, gets 11 offensive rebounds a game. That with the eight steals, they get 19 more chances to score. Out rebounding Bradley by plus two right now in the game. And a hold underneath on Drake. This is going to go against Wilkins. It's a second. Well, an excellent job continuing the battle back and forth. You get some big play from the big man down low, DJ Wilkins, on the miss, but the flush by Donnell Brody to bring it within one. Introducing a hotel carefully crafted to leave a vivid imprint in downtown St. Louis. Designed with an effortless sense of style. Experience the luxury of Hotel St. Louis. Hotel St. Louis, exactly like nothing else. Siteman Cancer Center is proud to be among a select group to receive the National Cancer Institute's highest rating, Exceptional. We're honored and more driven than ever. Our focus is forward as we lead the fight against cancer, looking deeper and reaching higher with breakthrough research, clinical trials, and prevention programs. When you need world-class cancer care, put your trust in Washington University physicians at Siteman Cancer Center. You care about every detail, and so do we. Every ingredient from our trusted sources. Every ingredient has a purpose. Purina cares here and here. Welcome back to Peoria. Bradley working on a monumental upset tomorrow. 
It's the final day of competition in the 2021 Valley Indoor Track and Field Championship at the Unidome in Cedar Falls, Iowa. Coverage begins at 11.15 in the Valley on ESPN. And uh, great track and field tradition in this league as well. And yes, we would like to say hello to, oh no, no, Cameron Crutwig, Lucas Williamson, and Porter Mosier and the rest of the Ramblers. We know you're watching. You can't <laughs> fool us. You got by. Southern Illinois took you to the max, but you won. And now Drake is fighting for its life. Drake must win to tie Loyola for the regular season co-championship and Bradley's playing their tail off. They give all the credit to Brian Wardle and what he's been able to instill with these guys as Darius Hanna can't get the foot back there. I'm just so impressed by their energy, man. They just they are just leaving it all on the court. And that's one of the things that you see from Darren DeVries. He's a guy that instills, leave everything on the court, empty the tank. And what he's seeing is the same from the Braves. Sean East, the second, has got his first foul. Team foul number five. And the Braves in the second half. If you think the wear and tear, as we talked about, legs, heavy legs, may be a factor. Drake, two of 12 from three. Bradley, three of 17. Neither team over 20% shooting from the arc. But Bradley's defense has been good. Again, they don't have Henry. Went down with an ankle injury early in the game. Coming on. Finding also out. Yes, if they struggle with this, Brody, he's going to get two foul shots. So Drake's gone back to the formula of chasing misses here. It's rescued them in the last couple of minutes. Well, they're doing a nice job. And what you have is the benefit of Darnell Brody, a big body guy. You can see just moves out Darius Hanna. And right there, tries to go for the flush. He went off the glass. He probably would have got an and one there with the contact. Brody, good looking foul shot. He's got five all in the second half after having a career high 21 last night. And yes, Loyola, we know you're watching. <laughs> and Loyola's going, yeah, he had five big free throws against us in Des Moines in that victory on Saturday. On Sunday of their Saturday Sunday split in mid month, when Drake won 51 to 50 in Des Moines. This could be one of those wake up calls for Darren DeRees' Drake Bulldogs, where they recognize they have to show up each and every night, especially next week in Arch Madness, where you cannot afford to have an off night. <laughs> I think Bradley has to get back to going to the bucket. Haven't had as many shots inside the pin as they did earlier in the game. I think it's kind of hurt them offensively. And I know Kent's got three threes, but he's only got, tw in this game, only 12 for the year. He's, he's challenging the probabilities here. Yep. You see, Bulldogs offense a little bit out of sorts here. They like to get the clock down inside five seconds and get to the basket. Yep, starts change pivots. And turns it over, and again, very unaccustomed for the uh, Drake Bulldogs. That is their fourth turnover in this game. Well, they've had several possessions where they've gotten down about two seconds, one second on the play clock, on the shot clock, and they've gotten a quality bucket. But it seems like when they, more times than not in this game, they've been a little bit out of sorts. Yes, the fool was looking for the alley oop to Tremel Murphy. Weren't on the same page. You got the double dribble. Yes, the fool looks like a fighter in the 12th round. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. Eight minutes to go here, Dayton. Drake wins. They'll tie for the co championship, get the one seed, and set more history. But Bradley is not giving up. <laughs> Attractive offers on the ultra-responsive Acura TLX. Visit your Acura dealer today. <laughs> this has got the steak and the sizzle. The tots on this are just crispy and they're flavorful. This will oh. keep you out of my tots. Sonic Extra Long Ultimate Cheese Steaks.
Yeah, this might keep me out of your talks. With no fees or minimums on checking and savings accounts, banking with Capital One is like the easiest decision in the history of decisions. Kind of like... It's looking kind of chilly out today. What am I going to wear? I think I'll go with... A cardigan. Yep, even easier than that. And with a top-rated app that lets you deposit checks and transfer money anytime, anywhere, is it really even a decision? That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? What do I smell? What colors do I see? What music is playing? When you walk out to the ring, there's nothing more important than confidence. So you've got to train your mind to protect it. I do that by focusing on what's around me, never letting the moment get too big. When that bell sounds, nerves are nowhere to be found. Confidence is half the battle when breaking through, so protect it. Train what's under the armor. Again, drama here in Peoria, Illinois. Before planning your trip next week to St. Louis, or to follow the 2021 Arch Madness State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Men's Basketball Championship, download the Arch Madness app. It's epic. And visit archmadness.com. Both resources have all of the information you need to know about the tournament schedule, hotel accommodations, and other fun events during the tournament. Actually, one of the better apps in college athletics. Log on to archmadness.com and download the app on your phone tonight. And again, there will be limited attendance next week at Arch Madness, but it is not going to take away from the intensity of that event at all. And we got intense moments here. And Darren DeVries trying to figure this out while Brian Wardle, you know, early in the week when he told us, hey, we're just trying to build now yep. with all the adversity. They're building tonight. I'm telling you, they're getting some good out of this the way these young guys are played. You're exactly right. They have to go through some some battle wounds, and, but that's a part of the growth. Adversity, and each of these teams are facing some adversity. Drake not playing as quality basketball this evening as they have all season long coming into this game, 24 and two. And yet they are in an absolute battle right now. Going left, strong take. Oh, and an awesome opportunity, and Bradley just stays right after it and creates a new opportunity. How about that effort by the Bradley Braves down low? Sean East comes out with the rebound. Good recognition. Didn't get any easier. Antonio Thomas with a wide open 12 footer. It's a one point game. Drake possession in the lead. Antonio Thomas with four points on the game. Hasn't been efficient away from the basket or beyond the arc. But those extra, those plays are extra effort plays. And that's a nice drive, create contact. Just can't get it to drop. DJ Wilkins. 14 for Wilkins. Five in the second half. And Bradley can regain the lead. And Bradley does have the lead. Nice take by East that time going to his right. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good, we've seen most of the offense run down the left side of the floor, but that's two consecutive shots by Bradley in the paint by guards to take over the lead. Sturts, a miss against the zone as Bradley went back to that 3-2 and length at the top of the zone. Now the tempo totally on the side of Bradley in this game, slowing it down just a bit. You just kind of feel like you haven't seen the, the best surge by the Bulldogs in this game. Not playing as efficient as they'd like and yet only down by one point. They're fighting lactic acid right now. And Bradley just so aggressive. This is the Braves' arrow. And Bradley right now is attacking the glass on the offensive end. They've, uh, no, they're still out rebounded by Drake by two, but that's not the case in the last several minutes. Well, Linky is out there. They got two big bodies there. You can see the extra energy and effort. Jason Kent 
a little bit longer than Drake on the floor. Add that to the effort. You've got guys on the floor that understand their role. You're not seeing any errant shots from the outside by guys that can't make the shots, and Linky knows what he's on the floor to do. And that's the class to stop. Enormous three. Enormous from Jason Kent. 12 points, all on threes. I'll repeat, he had nine all year prior to tonight. And Darren DeVries now sees a four-point deficit at 5.25 to go in the game. Oh, excellent job. They're getting it done. A lot of energy on the bench by the Bradley Braves. But when you get that kind of output by Jason Kent and other players stepping up with the loss of their stars and a, a large portion of their offensive production, it takes the young guys to really step up to the challenge. And Jason Kent is one of those guys getting it done. Again, if you joined us late, and we know Loyola did because they had their own business to take care of. They're watching us now. Deshaun Henry left with an ankle injury. And here's what really coming back on a second chance opportunity, but it's been Bradley to do this. Yeah, getting very efficient, getting closer to the basket. And Jason Kent dialing it in all game long to give the Bradley Braves a four-point lead with just five minutes, 25 seconds left in this game. Of course, Drake had the two injuries. Roman Penn out for the season had surgery to end his year after being injuring a, injuring a foot against Evansville on the Sunday game a week ago. And then Tank Hemphill out on February 11th. They're still hoping to get him back. And here's the zone again for Bradley. Switching it up, what they're able to do when they make shots or coming out of timeout, they're able to switch it up defensively. And Garrett starts with the extra efforts and put back to his first miss six foot three he makes a living in the paint just with his effort right there you can see drive to the basket nice little floater right place right time good pump fake strong to the hoop and a possible three-point play mitch holtis along with danon hughes here in peoria danon usually they think of zone busters as outside shooters starts as a zone buster <laughs> because he'll go find the slinky angles to beat the zone. The most frustrating player to probably play on the court is a guy like Garrett Sturt. That's the way you love him. But he misses the free throw. And Matt. A nice block by Darnell Brody. Mismatch on the outside. East. Brody on east. He has to go right. Twice he's got right. Twice he's blown by him. Ten for Sean East. Well, the different cast of characters stepping up to the plate for Bradley. Back to the man-to-man -man defense. Well, it's not a play by Tremont Murphy. Just his first, that's his first points in the second half. Well, Mitch, it, for most of this game, you have not seen an easy bucket made by Greg Bulldogs. And that's a credit to Bradley. Their defense just swarming the ball each and every time down the court. Haven't seen Yesifu who's on defense and Sean East really step up either. Big three. Another big three. Rick Mass. His first three-point make in this game. He's been 41% over his last nine. Five-point lead for Bradley. We're headed for crunch time. <laughs> when Rank Mass is making these kind of shots, it's going to be a long afternoon for any opponent. Bradley Braves dialing it in as Mass pulls up from three. Long range to give him a five-point lead. I mean, we could have. Mm, mm. I know where you're going. Mm. No, we couldn't have. You're right. I was going to say, we could have got one and shared, nah, that but that's not that true. Work. Sonic Extra Long Ultimate Cheese Steaks. That, that wouldn't work. With the Capital One Venture Card, you earn unlimited double miles on every purchase every day. Objection! My credit card doesn't earn double miles on every purchase. Overruled. With the Venture Card, it's every purchase. Whoa. What's in your wallet? <laughs> Exploration. It's in our DNA. 
and there are new worlds to explore. For attractive offers on ultra-responsive Accurate TLX, visit your Accurate dealer today. To support local restaurants, we've been to every city, including Baton Rouge. And even Topeka. Yeah, we're exhausted. Woo. So tonight, I'll be eating the Roast Beef Hero from Harm in Soho. Excellent. And tonight, I'll be eating the Coconut Curry Chicken from Peakley's in Winter Hill. <laughs> oh, they're excellent. I had so many fried plantains. I thought I was going to Pearl. Do you think they bought it? Oh, yeah. Hi, I'm a new customer and I want your best new smartphone deal. Well, I'm an existing customer and I'd like your best new smartphone deal. Oh, do you? Actually, it's for both new and existing customers. Oh, I feel silly. <laughs> but I do want the fastest 5G network. Oh, I want the fastest 5G network. Are we actually doing this again? It's not complicated. Only AT&T gives everyone the same great deal. Like the Samsung Galaxy S21 5G for free when you trade. Mitchell just back with Dan and Hughes in Peoria, Illinois. It's good. I'm sorry, State Farm players of the game. Surprisingly great rate. State Farm's the real deal. You get personalized service from your local agent or use the State Farm mobile app when you're on the go like a good neighbor. State Farm is there. Uh, well, DJ Wilkins really stepped up early. Has been a little bit cold in the second half, but 14 points for the Bulldogs. But on the other side, you can make an argument. Jason Kent, great math. But I think everything is flowed through Sean East the second. 10 points, 6 rebounds, 4 assists, and the Bradley Braves are up by 5 points. Drake is 2 of 14 from 3-point range. And Bradley's back to the man-to-man. Yes, -man. if he explodes, but blocked by mask. Still, no easy shots for the Bulldogs. Wonder if they're a little bit tired, if their legs are a little bit tired, but... I'm going to give more credit to Bradley Braves, stepping up defensively, creating turnovers, not allowing an easy shot, and strong at the clock. They've been leaning on Henry. They haven't had him all night since the beginning of the game. And a fan came through. <laughs> when you're feeling it, you're feeling it. Jason Kent. Amazing display from beyond the arc in this game. Nine makes for the year before the night. He's got five tonight. Five of nine from beyond the arc. Jackson airballs at three, but Drake will keep it. Jonah Jackson trying to give some fresh legs to Duran DeVries here. Down eight with 2.28 to go. Again, Loyola Chicago's already won. They won an overtime tonight at home against Southern Illinois. We're going to rotate Jamel Murphy back onto the floor, but 2 of 15 from beyond the arc are the Bulldogs. And you're down by 8 at this juncture. You need somebody to knock down a three-pointer. Sturts. Gets bailed out on a foul. This is going to be a two-shot opportunity. He had one second on the shot clock. It was in desperation, and Brown Wardle. Now you just saw his reaction. Well, Jason Kent tried to get his hands on the ball. Did a nice job defensively up until that point, but that's a good, smart play by Garrett Sturt to just launch the ball up with the contact. That's the benefit of the doubt. Sturts has 11, two over his average. He got the whole season start at the line. They won at K-State. They won the little Apple Classic to start the year. He was 9 of 10 in that game at the line. Later, he's 7 of 8 at Missouri State. Tonight, 1 of 2. Drake needs all of these. Well, if he drops this shot right here, expect the press by the Bulldogs as they rotate Lisa Samaka in. He's a guy that's going to be more athletic at a little speed onto the floor. Sturts fouls, but it's not a bad foul. It's just a fourth team foul on Drake. So they have fouls to give. Bradley's next foul will put Drake in the double bonus. They're going to pick up 
full court, force Bradley to work harder on the offensive end. Man to man. They have a mismatch with Jamel Murphy against Rank Mass. Yusufu has got his third foul, but again, still no one and one for Bradley. Last night's game, he had four of the five starters for the Bulldogs in double figures. Right now, you just have two guys, Sturts and Wilkins, with 12 and 4, respectively. 14, I'm sorry. So Darren DeVries now fouling here. He didn't want to get to the next 30 seconds and not have uh, try to put Bradley at the line. 154 to go, but they're getting a fresh 20 seconds every time these fouls happen. And that's what you're seeing. He, he actually left Samaka on the floor intentionally so he can draw those fouls. He's going to rotate Darnell Brody back in after these free throws. So they're going to make Bradley work at the free throw line to keep this lead. Antonio Thomas, 67% at the line, but he just hasn't been there much this year. This is only a sixth attempt all year with the one and one. It looks like he's been there for the last two months. <laughs> nice smooth stroke right there. Hasn't been efficient from beyond the arc, but you can tell the young man has confidence. A little bit of pressure right here. <laughs> Drake down eight. That's eight three, Brody Stroud, he'll get two shots this time. Looked like DJ Wilkins was a little surprised that he was wide open in the corner. Could have taken a little bit more time to get that shot up. But Darnell Brody worked so hard in the paint. Look at the footwork, getting around ranked mass. Gets fouled on the way back up. Brody, six points, now seven, all in the second half after having a career high 21 last night. He's had some monster double doubles. And three of three from the free throw line. And Drake's wasting no time here. They're fouling. And I tell you what they did, they fouled Darius Hanna, they knew right away, he's 28% at the line for the year. I mean, yeah, 28%, not 82, 28%. So Drake knew right away, once he got it, fouling. Well, here, here's the situation, you know, a, a, a tough, tough predicament for the Bradley Brave. Because you've had to go so deep into your bench, because of the missing players, the injury to Jay Sean Henry early in the game, you don't have as efficient shooters at the line that you would like to have with the lead late in the game. Super smart by Drake to see that foul. Yes, if he with the quick layup. He's in double figures with 10. He's been frustrated tonight. And what do we have here? So five-point game, still 133 to go. You see Drake's 10 of 14 at the line, but... Usually you don't see a team react that quickly to foul the guy's 28% and then yes, if we wasted no time. Or no time. Well, that's what he brings to the table. So quick, so strong to the basket. And Wilkins is going to make Antonio Thomas do it again after he just hit two. I think you wanted a foul, but you wanted the ball inbounds before the foul. Nevertheless, Antonio Thomas, who's normally a pass-first guard. We've seen him take a few shots in this game. He dropped his last two free throws. But intentional substitution pattern for Darren DeVries. Three of three, Antonio Thomas. And there's a look at the uh, wounded. Ari Boyo over there, and then Henry was hurt tonight. Drake's going to have to quit foul with Thomas. Yes, a good foul on a three. 
And Brian Wardle, you can make an omelet on his forehead right now. <laughs> Uh, Sean East is our player of the game. He's been so good all night, and then he lunges at the three-point shooter. These are the learning moments, though. When you have a young team, hasn't been in a position to win ever since they got through the university a, a couple of weeks, a week or so ago. You got young talent on the floor. They have to learn by fire. That's one of those situations where Sean East, he'll be a better player. Drake, two of 16 from three. But yes, if we get three of these with the clock stop, he's 80% for the year. And Darren DeVries playing the defense offense substitution, as you mentioned, Samaka back in there. We're going to bring him up into the press, man to man, but he's so athletic and so fast. He's getting on Jackson. And the ball goes out of bounds, and Bradley will keep it. Well, they're going to check it to see if it went off the foot of Sean East the second, trying to dribble out the clock. They look like the Bulldogs were trying to foul him, but he got a little out of sorts. Might have lost the ball out of bounds. Not sure if it went off of Yesifu's foot or not. But this could be a key turnover for the Bradley Braves. You saw Rick Mask point at his temples, telling the guys to be smart. Yep. Is he saying that in Dutch? <laughs> Is he, maybe, you know, they got, yeah. they got a real European flavor on his team. Tavaninen is out tonight with an illness, but they're looking at this. Yeah, it's a matter of if it Jonah did. Jackson's hand got in on the ball, but he's playing to the foot of Sean East the second there, saying it went up to him. As Yesifu tried to take the offensive foul. But you can tell Sean East II kind of got out of sorts just a bit as he tried to dribble down the baseline. That's just good defense, good swarming defense by the Bulldogs. Bradley could have just shut down tonight. After Henry got hurt, he's been the guy that's been carrying them. Yeah. And they actually rose, they've risen their game. Yep, and, there and we, here we see it again. Is this off his knee, though, when it comes? Right there, you see There's a hand. Jackson's hand. Hand. It goes right off his left knee. He's pointing down right after that. Looks pretty clear. Although it was called Bradley Ball, very demonstrative there. Is this clear enough, though? Is there enough clear Jackson. and convincing? Brian Wardle, did you notice he didn't react? <laughs> he was like, I hope nobody saw that. <laughs> yep, Bradley's going to keep it. Oh, wow. We, we don't have the best camera angle, but you can see right here with the swipe. Mm. Can't really tell if it was the left hand of Jonah Jackson or the left knee of Sean East the second. Wilkins has four fouls for Drake. Hannah has four fouls for Bradley. And as the game has gone right now, might not want to foul that man. Antonio Thomas really done a nice job from the free throw line. Four of four so far in this game. Thomas came into the game. Nine of 13 for the year at the line. And every shot from the free throw stripe has been pure. He's looking like Daniel Ruffin back from the those six days of the Braves. Seeing in every one of these foul shots. Now Brian Wardle does the defense offense platooning. Well, what you get is Darius Hanna back on the floor, a little bit more athletic to contest the threes that will be put up by the great Bulldog. Yes, so oh, so, so, strong. so strong to the bucket. Oh. Yes, a two. And a foul on the three. Brian Wardle will argue a late whistle here. 
Yesifu was trying to sell the call here a little bit. But Yesifu is going to get three shots with the clock stop down to four at 50.6. Yeah, I think it was just an errant reflex by the official. On the foul call, it did look like there was some contact on Yesifu as he got the extra pass from DJ Wilkins. This could be huge. We get well, three we, shots from we, the free throw strike. By an 80% free throw shooter and yes, a bull to bring the game within one point. They want to see who the foul is on, and I think it's going to be three shots. Let's watch it here. And the extra pass, Jason Kent just runs past. You have to believe there was contact for such an efficient shooter and Joe Yesifu to shoot that kind of air ball. Very unfortunate for Brian Wardle and the Braves. But Jason Kent is just a flyby. He's just yeah. a fly, but it's again fouling on the three is the worst thing he's gonna have. And Drake misses it. Yesifu's hit five in a row until then. 79% free throw shooter coming into the game. Twice, though, we have seen the Braves show their uh, inexperience fouling Yesifu on three point attempts. Yep. This will make it a two point game at 50.6. Changes the strategy dramatically. We get Connor Linky in a little bit bigger, stronger, to go along with. Darnell Brody for the Bulldogs. Valley Championship, a one seed is on the line. 50.6 to go in the regular season. And a quick foul, Sean East. Now, what do you want to know oh, here? He's 80% at the line, but he's only been there 20 times all year. And has not been there in this game yet. Crucial free throws here. Both teams in a double bonus, two shot fouls. So give these guys credit for hitting every one of these shots down the line. And you have the rotation back in of Darius Hanna, a little bit more athletic. Some guard out beyond the arc if the Bulldogs Try to get another three up. And that one makes it two possessions. Loyola's already won. Drake's going to pull this out. Yes, if we go for smart thing, but right to the rack. Two point game at 44.3, 14 second differential. Timeout, Brian Wardle. Yes, if it doesn't take long to get to the rack, does he? <laughs> one quick dribble. A lot of bounce still left in those legs. Watch this first. Not giving Darius Hanna any chance for the block. Still got some explosion in those legs to bring this game within two points. And 40 plus inch vertical jump. <laughs> Looks like a defensive back down there, man. Kind of looks like Tyreek Hill. He's you know what? It's got a little Tyreek Hill in it. You say that, and I, I thought that the last time I had it. The court cheetah, we'll call him that. Yeah. So, Darren DeBreeze, again, if they win, they will tie Loyola for the regular season championship and get the one seed. If they lose, they will fall to 15-3 and three in the Valley and be the two seed. And go to 24-3 and three overall. I think no matter what happens, Darren DeVries recognizes this might be a wake-up call for his team. Got to be shot each and every time they take the court. Drake decides to foul, and they're going to go ahead and foul Thomas again. So down two, you got a decision to make. Either foul quick there after not getting the 10 count, or try to defend the clock. And recognize what Bradley is doing such a good job of is the confidence displayed by their guard, Sean East II and Antonio Thomas. Those guys have 
confidence that they can get to the Charlie strike and knock down free throws. They're not passing it. They're, there's no earned passes. Trying to get the ball out of their hands. They want it all on their shoulders in this crunch time situation. Antonio Thomas, prior to tonight, had been to the line 10 of 15 times. Tonight, he is 5 of 5 at the line. Correction, 6 of 6 at the line. Yep. He gets two here at 37.4. And each one of the seven have been pure. Now he's looking like Hersey Hawkins. <laughs> You play the percentages, it is a one possession game. He goes to the zone with the longer body up front. Jason Ken, his presence, but not going to make it easy for a, a three attempt by Drake. Drake has one timeout remaining. Now this is great defense by Bradley. Darius Hannah. Yes, if the contact there. But no call, and now Drake. What a great defensive stand by the Braves. Darius Hanna, Jason Kent up top. And Bradley burns its last time out to avoid a five count. And that might have been the defensive stop of the game right there. Great personnel on the floor by Brian Wardle, Darius Hanna, Jason Kent up top. Recognizing you're not going to give the shorter three-point shooters of the Bulldogs any free looks. Well, frustration, quick three by Yesifu, and they can't even, it's all air. What a great move to defensively to go back to that zone yeah. on that occasion. He's switched defenses nicely. I've just got two images in my mind. I know the Drake fans are clinging here, thinking, can the Bulldogs pull this out? Bradley fans are going, hey, look at these young guys. Mm -hmm. But the third group is Loyola. They're sitting there in that yeah. locker room. Yep. I'm telling you, they're in that locker room <laughs> at the Genteel Center watching this because if Bradley holds on, Loyola will be the champions of this league and be the one seed next week with a 16-2 and Valley record. How about the two top teams that have been pretty much the top teams all season long going one going into overtime and this one down to the wire right now but dana and i covered this league for 26 years it's been like that all yeah. the time you it's just so competitive in this league every night uh, Sturts almost got the steal Sturts quickly <laughs> pleaded with the officials that that ball might have hit. He got a hand on it and then onto the hand. I don't think Sturts is going to get this one. <laughs> well, they didn't get the benefit of the doubt of the ball off the knee of Sean East II a few possessions ago. They probably won't get the benefit of the doubt here. Boy, how proud is Brian Wardle of these guys. No Henry, lost him to the ankle injury. Yep. Didn't have Tom and Einan sick tonight. And it's just a bunch of guys that have galvanized around each other to pull off what would be the biggest upset in the Valley this year. Ooh, that's a little closer than I thought it was. The left hand of Antonio Thomas it looked like maybe, and it has to be clear, it looked like maybe it went off of Sturz's hand right onto the left hand of Antonio Thomas. That will be huge for the Bulldogs. Bradley already got the benefit of a not clear enough to turn it over. Let's maybe take another look here. You know, Sturts immediately was pleading here. Yeah, fights through. Right there, you see his left hand, but then the left hand of Antonio Thomas. It's just a matter of if it's as clear <laughs> to the officials. I'll give Thomas credit, though. He took the hands off the hot stove. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like he stepped lunging. And it's uh, like, nope, nope, nope. 0 for 2 Bradley's on the reviews. It. Yep. Yep. Going to be Bradley's ball. 
We love the effort by Garrett Sturtz. A little bit more energy we're seeing from the Bulldogs in the latter part of this game than maybe we saw earlier. Immediate foul on East. He just hit two. And the young man has given indication that Bradley's future might well be centered around him. The UMass transfer will get two shots here. It's been unfortunate times for the Bradley Graves over this last two weeks. But there's always a little light at the end of the tunnel when you have young talent that get opportunities. And they've just been money down the stretch at the line. Antonio Thomas, 7 of 8. East now 3 of 3. Straight in! Five-point game. I'm from the line. And a foul on Bradley at 3.8. And this will be against Kent. And it's honestly the worst that having Drake to get a basket here. Yeah, he stopped the clock. Stop the clock. A good free throw shooter. Possibly knocked down both shots. Try to quickly foul. The way the Braves are shooting from the free throw line, it's going to be very tough. Yes, if we started slow, now he's got 20. Mostly with the barrage here at the end. Hey, you got the guys on the court for the Bulldog. Bradley's out of timeouts. And Drake uses its last one. And Brian Wardle's going to look at options here. One of those might be the heave, although you better get a touch Yeah. at 3.8. And Drake has to get a steal and a three to tie it. Well, Bradley's been so good in this game. Remember, Brian, I'm sorry, Darren, Darren DeVries has really done a nice job. He's actually employed that foul technique. What, there's about six, seven minutes left in this second half. We started to foul to get extra possessions and put some pressure on the young talent of the Braves. And credit to Brian Warner, those guys stepped up and got the job done very confidently from the free throw stripe. So in this situation, Mitch, you, you talk about trying to get a turnover and get the ball out to a shooter to get an opportunity to knock down a three to tie this ball game. Because if you have to foul them, they're going to go to the free throw line with two shots. Making one will pretty much seal the deal. Well, Drake has reached the apex of the scanning. They must get a steal and a three in 3.8 seconds. Well, you got on the floor. You got ranked mass taking the ball out. Even though Darius Hannon, not a good free throw shooter, is in the front court. He's going deep. There you go. That's what I thought they would do. And that will end it. And they start to celebrate in Chicago. The celebration in Rogers Park can start in earnest. Because the Bradley Braves have pulled off the biggest upset in the Valley this year, at least in terms of what was on the line today. Well, how about ending it emphatically by Darius Hanna? Great, great win for Brian Warrell, Bradley Blaine. Man. For Bradley, it'll be their sixth league win. And Drake will fall to the two seed and go to 15 and three and 24 and three. Early motion.
Most everybody thought Maryland had no shot when Henry went down with the ankle injury tonight. And the Bradley Braves have come off with a monumental upset. Upsetting the Drake Bulldogs, 67-61. But we have to say hail to the champions. Hail to the Loyola Ramblers, <laughs> who pulled it out in overtime at home against Southern Illinois tonight. And the 21st-ranked Ramblers win the title in the regular season. They'll be the one seed, and Drake will try to rebound for next week as the two seed in Arch Madness. And a reminder, tomorrow it will be the final day of competition in the Valley Indoor Track and Field Championship at the Unidome in Cedar Falls, Iowa. Coverage begins at 11.15 a.m. Central in the Valley on ESPN. And for more Valley men's basketball action, join us on Thursday, March the 4th. The 31st chapter of Arch Madness takes center stage at Enterprise Center in St. Louis as coverage of the State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Tournament begins at 5 Central on the Valley at ESPN with the 8th seed against the 9th seed. Give tons of credit here to the Bradley Braves. That ended it. On the first break, Joseph Yesifu tried to get Drake enough at the end, but it wasn't enough Dean and Hughes. And Bradley gets the upset, and Loyola gets the championship. As the Braves get it done, Dean and Hughes, I've been told they're so long from here. Bradley 67, Drake 61, all games on ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. Thanks for watching tonight's contest. This has been a presentation of ESPN.